Hey, look at this rock. At first sight, it looks like a regular boring rock, the likes of which you can see when walking along the beach. Its color doesn't stand out, and its weight is pretty regular, around 4 pounds. But everything changes when you learn that this rock was born on Mars, traveled all the way to Earth, and ended up in Antarctica. Ah, now the story sounds much more fascinating. So let's find out the details. Researcher Roberta Skor, who worked on the ANZMET project, which stands for Antarctic Search for Meteorites, of the Denver Antarctic Program, found this meteorite in 1984. If you want to decipher the name of the space traveler, I can help you. It comes from the place where the scientists spotted it, the Allen Hills of Antarctica, hence ALH. And then we've got the year of the discovery and the number of the sample. If you think that Roberta picked up the rock and exclaimed something like, Woohoo! I'm holding a chunk of Mars!" I'll have to disappoint you. At the very beginning, it was totally unclear where the meteorite came from. And one thing confused researchers even more. The meteor was very different from other meteorite groups found on our planet. Ok, but then, how did they finally figure out it was a visitor from Mars? All thanks to traces of gas similar to those that make up the atmosphere of the red planet. We learned about its composition thanks to the brave Viking lander that carried out the necessary analysis in situ in 1976. Anyway, back to our rocky discovery. It's actually very special, and not only because the rock arrived from far, far away. Among those several thousand meteorites found on Earth, just around a hundred have likely come from Mars. And even so, our guy is different from them and seems to be part of a separate group. So, let's go into the past and follow the life story of this cosmic traveler. It most likely formed around 4 billion years ago on its home red planet. One day, which wasn't very different from others, turned out to be life-changing for this peaceful rock. A meteorite impact catapulted into space, and it started its own journey as a small asteroid. At that time, it was way larger than at the moment of discovery on Earth. At one point, ALH got close to Earth and, who knows, probably decided to explore something. That's how, 13,000 years ago, it ended its space journey by colliding with our planet. At the moment, this Martian fragment is the oldest we've got. But at first, it wasn't all that popular. Only in 1996 did it become way more famous after a groundbreaking discovery. You see, some NASA researchers started wondering, well, the fragment is obviously very old. But then, could it have recorded any traces of life that could have been thriving on Mars at the time ALH formed on the red planet? And guess what? Those scientists turned out to be right. Yeah. They detected traces of very fine magnetite particles. Those were completely similar in structure and chemical composition to the particles we have on Earth. They're called magnetofossils, and magnetotactic bacteria produce them. So it might mean that, at one point, there were some forms of life on Mars. In April 2020, scientists from the Japanese Space Agency made another discovery. They detected nitrogen, containing organic material of Martian origin in our meteorite. So who knows what new astounding secrets further examination of the meteorite might reveal. At the moment, though, all you can do is travel to Antarctica and find more of them. The thing is, this place is great for meteorite hunting. Surprisingly, we have found nearly 50,000 meteorites in Antarctica, and hundreds of thousands are still waiting to be discovered. Each of these space rocks can tell us a story of the evolution of the solar system. For example, the very first lunar rock found on the icy deserted continent proved that chunks of space objects larger than asteroids can also end up on Earth. So, let's say you got inspired and decided to go meteorite hunting all the way to Antarctica. Well, get ready for some serious challenges. Despite their potential abundance, finding space rocks mm, isn't as easy as it might seem. You'll have to visit remote areas, and there's still no guarantee that you'll be able to spot a meteorite. And that's actually a huge problem. Meteorites are vanishing from sight. Currently, scientists find about 1,000 meteorites in Antarctica each year. But according to a new study, about 5,000 more get hidden out of sight every year. The culprit is warming temperatures. Worried scientists created a model that could help them figure out where those meteorites might surface. This model was quite complicated. 
taking into consideration snow cover, surface temperature, the speed at which ice flows, and even the steepness of the terrain. After that, they ran simulations under various warming scenarios. It turned out that meteorites indeed sank out of sight as temperatures rose. To say that the researchers were upset is obvious. They didn't expect that climate change would affect their work so much. Even though those areas are below freezing, people still managed to ruin a crucial archive of the solar system. But let's get back to your meteorite hunt. If you want your chances to find one to be higher, travel to the base of mountains or outcrops where ice, which usually flows to the lower ground, is forced to move upward. But make sure to take your windbreaker with you. In those places, powerful winds brush away snow, exposing bright, vivid blue ice. Instead of melting, this ancient ice can change directly into water vapor, and it helps expose meteorites that would otherwise remain hidden. You need to hurry, though. Meteorites at the surface disappear quickly. Even when temperatures are well below freezing, the rocks can still absorb some of the sun's heat and melt the ice. It's like they're creating underground, or shall I say, under ice, tunnels for themselves, sinking and hiding from sight. Sometime later, refreezing closes the entrance to those tunnels, effectively trapping meteorites inside, tucked out of sight. Now, scientists admit it's very tricky to find working methods to spot meteorites. And if we don't hurry and develop such methods, we might lose between 80,000 and 250,000 space rocks in total. No wonder scientists are on a mission to find more meteorites. They're focusing on meteorite stranding zones. Those are places where meteorites often gather on the surface because of specific features of geology, ice flow, and climate conditions. As you already know, you can find meteorites on blue ice without snow cover. This makes meteorites easy to spot. But finding such hot spots is often pure luck. Or you gotta sit day and night scouring maps and satellite images in attempts to spot blue ice zones near research stations. Let me introduce Veronica Tolinov, a glaciologist, and her team. They've taken things to the next level by developing a smart Antarctic-wide map. To do it, they've used machine learning and satellite data from NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, and others. This map highlights areas where meteorites might be hiding based on past finds and all kinds of climate and ice data. Apparently, the best places to find meteorites are along the edges of the continent and near mountains with blue ice. Unfortunately, it's not just the blue ice that matters. The temperature and speed of the ice flow are also super important. For example, if the ice flows too quickly, meteorites get swept away before they can accumulate. So, if you want to find a meteorite, you have to wait for very precise conditions. The surface temperature has to stay below 16 degrees Fahrenheit almost all the time. Otherwise, meteorites sink. You can start with the Allen Hills region. Yup, that's where our ALH friend was discovered. This area is kind of a meteorite gold mine with more than a thousand finds. But there are even more promising places, like the Fimble Hyman Mountains, and no one has searched there yet. You might be the first. In any case, with this new map, researchers developed a where-to-go index that ranks the best meteorite hunting spots, making future field trips much more targeted. And with plenty of blue ice regions still unexplored, there are tons of meteorites just waiting to be found. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.